Hello everyone. Welcome to Gear There and Everywhere. My name is Paul and I'm joined by Sam, Ryan, and Dom and we're here to discuss Beatles and all the little intricate parts to their music and gear. This episode we're going to be talking about John Lennon's Black Strat and George Harrison's Gibson ES345. So let's take it away gen- gentlemen. What do we <laughs> want to talk about on this one? All right. You want to start off with the 345? Yeah, 345 yeah. It sort of has the most lore, I guess, about it, right? Well, should we go into the... Uh, we should probably go into the history of the 345. Yeah. A little bit. If you've got what it. What year was his? Uh, 63 or 64. I don't, I don't think we know. When did, it, when did he get it? Like, exactly well, that's, what year? That's the mystery. Well, he got it in 65, yeah. definitely. 65. We don't know who gave it to him. Yeah. So... So just to give a bit of history on the 345. The 345 was manufactured, of course, it's Gibson, right? It was designed in 1955, or 1959, produced from 59 to 81. And it was actually designed for jazz players as a sort of upscale version of the 335. So that's kind of a brief history on it. And for people who don't know what it is... uh... It's the Marty McFly guitar uh, in Back to the Future. I was going to say it's like Chuck Berry-ish to me, yeah. the guitar. Yeah. It has the Which parallelogram the... inlays yeah. and the I should just vario go tone. But, uh, I'll do that. So, but, um, semi-hollow it's... body guitar. Yeah. Um, well, it's especially funny in Back to the Future because the, the, the bit is that they're in 55 and it's like, I think first made in 58. Is that right? You said 59. But um, anyways, yeah, so it, it shouldn't have existed. <laughs> and uh, Norm Norm's Rare Guitarist was the people who uh, loaned it to him. Yep. And, uh, yeah, that's a whole funny thing. But, uh, yeah, so George had, had it, his look like this. Sunburst. Well, if I can look. Probably. <laughs> so he there did play it live. We yeah. know he did play it live. We've seen it. What show was that? Where was that? You want me to just play that video real quick? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, December 10th, 1965. So this is the Christmas tour, 65. So you can see George has got that. I, well, you can kind of see it <laughs> if you know what that guitar looks like. There's a bit here where they zoom in, I think. Yeah, that's, that's the best look of it you're going to get. So, one second. Before we go any further, it just popped into my head. What happened during the Christmas tour of 1965? George's gent got destroyed. Yeah. John Lennon's 325 fell off the stage and cracked his headstock. Oh, I didn't know about that. That was 64. That was 64. I thought that was a, because that's why he had the fire glow. He I had thought the Rose 65. Morris in oh, 64. Oh, in 64. That was a Christmas show. 64. That would have been a weird Never coincidence. Mind. Never mind. Okay, <laughs> I was thinking that's why he had the. All right, so let's keep going then. George's gent was strapped to the top of the van for some reason, and uh, kind of fell off and. Got ran over by a truck a couple times. That was bad. That was early. That was like sixty three, right? No, this Decem- was in December of sixty five. Yeah. Which it, this was in what was it, December second or something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember the story goes that they went back to go find it, and like all they found was like wood chips. Like there was just nothing <laughs> left by the time they got back there. Uh, yeah. So that one was gone pretty instantly, and that was which of. Because that is his gent. So what happened to the other gent? He gave it away. He gave that, that away before... in uh, 65 as well. Okay, so that was like right before that, maybe. There or... are photos of the band. There are photos of the band with that gent. Okay. Like the, the band he gave it to. So we know he gave it away. Okay. Uh, so his other gent was destroyed. So the story goes that the uh, a member of the Moody Blues loaned him that 345. Well, yes, but also I think this... From what I had read, that doesn't work because the the date that that was supposed that could have happened was uh before the gent actually got destroyed so well, that okay could have right. actually happened you're right because we can work it out and uh the day tripper videos were f- uh yeah are those, november, those are 20, november 23rd yeah november 23rd so that sets the earliest date that as far as i know most people are aware of is november 23rd but i have pictures oh so. I, I've shown you these guys. I've shown you guys these pictures before, but I have not shown the audience. All right. 
<laughs> Wait, is there's the Rick on the ground? Rick base. Uh, the base, yeah. Because yeah. so this is November third. It's Michelle. Uh, Nineteen sixty-five. So the only thing they did this this day was Michelle, uh, which it says just take one. Did they actually do it in one take? Michelle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, there's no way. I think. Well. Huh. This picture kind of disproves a little bit, too, of John's playing ability, because if they're doing Michelle right here and John has the nylon, that means John, John was tackling the intro and everything? Well, no, no, Michelle? there's, like, layered stuff. So Paul's playing, I think, the intro, and then John's doing this descending oh. bit. But yeah, there's, John's, like, way too much yeah. going on in that song. John's just doing, like... I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to tackle oh, that one next man. on YouTube. Yeah. That one's one yeah. heck of a recording. Well, that's what I'm saying, it... Nobody's done it yet with the nylon. Um, um, so where is the? Um, well, yeah. Let, let me let me build up the suspense here a little. So we've got all these photos. This is one of the. This is the only Rubber Soul session we actually have pictures of, which is unfortunate. But at least we have this, and you can see Paul's casino with the basement there. Uh, his his base over there. George on the J one hundred and sixty. John's Rick. This nylon string. I'm going to just stand it around. Uh, and they're on three uh, AC-30s. Or, yeah, so, Wait, uh, is that a Strat? Uh, yeah, here. This is a Strat. So that's one of the Sonic That's the blue one, yeah. So I'll just skip around. And you can see Capo on five. So that's, Mich that's how you play Michelle. And even on the bass. What's that um, behind Paul, though? Huh. Yeah, so what is that behind Paul? Huh. So... Obviously, we just talked about the country gentleman. So some people in the past have said, in reference to this guitar that's on this cabinet back here, um, that that's the country gent. But let me go forward a few photos to that other one. Uh, there's a lot of nice photos in here. Because the country gent obviously has got uh, Bigsby on it. Oh, that's very pixelated. Um... But you can see this guitar does not have a Bigsby. It's definitely like a stop tailpiece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'd see the bulkiness in the back and yeah. it doesn't have that. Or the binding, the same binding yeah. as the Gent. Right, that's right. Because the Gent has binding on both sides. Well, no, I guess they, they both have the same binding, actually. The binding on the neck would maybe be different. It's a little different, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, let's see. And the other thing you see is there's that one picture of John... Is it in this one? No. There's one picture of John where it's you can see the headstock in the background hanging off the side. Yeah, there it is. So that's the guitar. Oh, yeah. The guitar. And it's like Clouson tuners, right? Yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. sort of like, I don't know what you can it's tell. It's just a blur of pixels. Six <laughs> pixels. <laughs> <like that>. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you can see it. They look like Clousons. Yeah, do you think he's looking at the Beatles recording sessions book? The <laughs> Beatles gear book. <laughs> yeah. Finding out what he's going to play five years from now. Yeah, it's it's sort of funny. Like, <laughs> the fact that this guitar shows up in less Beatles session than, like, Beans. <laughs> <laughs> Is it worth giving some context to what Ryan's saying, too, just for the audience to really yeah. understand that? So the the December 1965 tour commenced after Rubber Soul Sessions, and a lot of people's theories is that because the Moody Blues were opening up for the Beatles that they lent him uh, George a 345 after his gent um, was destroyed. However, what Ryan is saying is that not only was the music video for Day Tripper and all those recorded before the tour started and you see the 345, but also these pictures of the Rubber Soul Sessions show the whoa. 345 was whoa, actually whoa, whoa. there. What's that? In November, uh, or November what? 3rd, which is 20 is, days before the, the video sessions. What is sitting here? What, go back to that photo. Did you see that? What's sitting on top of the cab there? That, yeah, that's the same thing. 345? Okay, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't... I was gonna say. They don't seem to crack it out at all, at least for for this session. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, so what songs do you think uh, it appeared on, Ryan? Day Tripper. Well, yeah, so <laughs> Day Tripper is the, the big one. And there's actually some interesting audio... I feel like I should play the, the take two for Day Tripper. When was Day Tripper recorded? 
That's October 18th. So I think that's right. Let me make sure that's. that's... So even earlier than the no, November that's, that's pictures right. we're seeing here. That's so that's a little off. What day is it? 16th, October 16th. It says 2:30 to 7 p.m. Recording day tripper takes one to th one through three, and then they recorded the uh, the overdub onto take three, and they also did take one of if I needed someone. Okay. Which I guess was the only take. Which if makes sense. Someone. That's why you see the. It's 360 right over there. Yeah. 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 Um, another thing that... Well, I can go ahead and play. I've done with my 345 uh, a test recording. Now, do uh, you have see. it isolated? Uh, yeah, I can pull that up. Just just your 345. Yeah, let me pull Other that up. thing to mention, too, is what amplifiers? It seems like they were using AC 30s in the studio for Rubber Soul, really? Like, I don't know, it just doesn't seem like they would be using the AC-30s to me. But, yeah, I mean... Oh, that, and of course that, what, uh, Showman or Baseman? What is basement. that blonde? Blonde thing? Baseman. Showman, right? Baseman. Baseman. Was, um, right. Yeah. yeah, Paul got that for the Rubber Soul Sessions. He didn't have it for help. Yeah. Hmm. So we got the Rickenbacker and the Baseman together for the Rubber Soul that's Sessions. It's a, a great combo, honestly. Great sound. So we're saying oh, okay. 345 and AC-30. Yeah, AC thirties. Yeah, and then the the basement was well, the bass amp. Day Tripper, where I think we're saying, is probably AC one hundred. That's my guess anyway, because yeah. it's like too, it's too like nice sounding. Like I can't get it to sound right on mine. Uh, the AC one hundred gives you a lot more clarity. Uh, well, it's got more guts. It seems. You know, it's got a bigger attack. We're thinking it's 345 on the basic track with John on the Rick 325, probably. And mm -hmm. then the overdub, because George's like lead part is double tracked, the overdub sounds a little cleaner. And so we're thinking the strat maybe on the overdub. And then that plays the actual solo while the, the basic track does the swells. Um,. And then there's actually a second... John plays a, an overdub there, too. Um, which is yeah. maybe on a strat, maybe on... You know, who knows. Um, but yeah, let me just go through. So this is Sam's... And we've also got Mike's... Michael's Mike's bass, bass and drums. Let me yeah. just get rid of that for now. And, and then... Here's what the 345 sounds like. And let me play that with with the strat. So, but yeah, it definitely has that sort of dirt on it. Um, let me pull up take uh take two because there's another interesting thing just since we're talking about day tripper that i feel like is worth mentioning um give me one sec to pull that up so we're saying i had round wounds on my strat which it, they would have had flats i think yeah they would have um, strats uh, they, they came stock with flats yeah yeah and just has that like quacky sound on his solo as well yeah the the fen i thought the fenders from the factory in the 60s came with regular um, they didn't come with flat wounds, fender straps they from did. the factory. They did. Yeah. Yeah. Those are 61s, too. So I've just pulled up take two, and, uh, George is talking to Mal before they actually do the recording, because there's a section of, uh, the bit where George does the swells on his 345, probably, um, where he tells Mal to turn the amp up just for that part where he's doing the swells because otherwise like if you kept the amp at the same volume where you're playing the main part it would sound too low on the recording and I, this is a way of, for him to save an overdub because every time you do an overdub you have to sort of you know you're losing s space on the tracks to put stuff Yep. Um, but you can hear here George says to Mal um, can you turn the amp or turn it to there And 
he says there, after I've done the foot pedal bit, turn it back to there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's, that's just a cool that. thing that's uh, additional. Um, you get to hear a... the tone of the guitar a little bit, too. Wherever, yeah, yeah. I would imagine that was, that was George, John. just that little strum thing. That was John? Yeah, that let me like just a, go ahead. That sounded like a Strat. What the Honestly. heck? Yeah, that's that's a three five there on the right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, that's a three. Yeah. That was a Fender right there. My theory is that their volume foot pedal was the uh, Vox Con- Continental organ one that they're using. You can see it in those pictures of the rehearsals. Yeah. Because um, that's the same thing being used on the organ. And if they're using AC 30s, if they're using the AC 30s, I mean, with that just cracked up high, I'm yeah. going to distort. Yeah, true. You know, especially if they're really driving it hard in the studio. So that's probably all the natural distortion they were using. Okay, here's the here's the audio I wanted to share before. Um, okay, so this is on the left side, it's the actual song, and then on the right side it's me. So here I'll just let you hear the intro. And this is specifically, uh, I think this might just be take three before overdubs. I can't remember. This might be the full, th- no, this might be just the full thing. Yeah, so that's the full thing. So that's the two guitars, and then here's me. But it has that it does sound good. dirt sound on it. But the clarity that he's got, he's got a little more clarity than I do, which I think is the AC100 being part have, of it. Do you have rounds or flats on that? I have rounds. I had put flats on it for nah, a bit. Yeah. It sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well yeah. again I think it's also the amp you're using as well there's there's not the bite that you see on the record you know but again it's tough I don't know it's just tough then to mimic the amp because then for the AC30 I mean technically none of us have a 60 what would they have had then a 64 should have been a copper panel oh I mean I, I, I'm pretty sure that's the AC100 yeah. yeah. So if only one. But in the studio, though. <laughs> oh. I don't. I mean, then. I mean, I could give it a try, but. I don't you have should. Any, give, uh, you should give it a shot. I, I'll, I'll come up there and bring my uh, 345 if you want. 345. Yeah, I know you used to drive far, anyways. Might yeah. as well. That would actually be really cool. It'd be you know put it to the test finally the right way. Yeah. You know. So that we yeah. think, you know, it's possible that George played the 345 on Tripper. I yeah. that's the theory I'm going with myself. Yeah. I don't know about you. So guys. the yeah, other I'm song open for that. The other song that is in question at least immediately is uh, Michelle, the solo on Michelle. And so Sam, do you want to try doing something with a Tennessean or while we're here? Yeah, so the only options for George, so George Martin wrote the solo out for George um the melody, but the options I guess George had was a strat. He could have done the neck pickup with the tone rolled off. But I don't know. It doesn't really sound thick enough. And then I guess he could have done J160 with the tone rolled off. But oh, I, I don't really know what that would sound like. So I'm going to get the tenny. I don't, yeah, I don't think that would sound right at all. I'll tell you, it, it doesn't sound. Yeah. But while he's doing that, I'll pull up my Michelle. Because I did a test of this as well. So, um, all right, I've got my, my uh, 345 audio pulled up as well after you play this. Cool. So, a quick little thing is that on Gretsch's, for anyone who doesn't know, Dom certainly knows this from having a tenny, but um, this switch over here is just your normal bridge, middle, and neck. And this switch over here is called the mud switch. So, uh, in the middle position, it's just stuck. <laughs> But if you go up or down, it kind of is like a tone roll off. There's no actual rotary tone control on a Gretsch. So I'll just play it. (laughs) 
it's a little uh a little thin. quiet in my amp right now but yeah i yeah i think that tone's a little too thin for what's the actual solo would you agree with that <laughs> yeah a little bit i mean i would it's tough to say well, I can, stuff to say. You want me to play my my what I, I mean, got? Sam, your your uh, amp isn't mic'd up, so it's like you know we're hearing mostly. I know the so many. Your, so oh really? Many variables, I have I my know. mic my amp mic'd up. If you want me to turn it up a little bit. Yeah, if you want to do that, you could do that. Let me, I'll try let me one more play, time. Uh, I'll play the three forty five, and then then maybe you play that again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so here's the real solo, of course. And then here's my 345. That's, uh, that sounded pretty good. I think it's pretty close. That sounded really good. It's very yeah. close. Yeah. And yeah, that. I would say so. Actually, what day would that have been? That it was in November. That. Was that on the same day that they recorded the basic track? I think it was all done in one day. It was yeah, so that's November the day of the photos, then. 3rd. Hmm. Yeah. So we definitely know he had it, obviously, because it's in those yeah. photos. Yeah. So. Yeah. Let me try one more time with... Oh, my... there. <laughs> what? All right, I'll go back to the same. What? Yeah. Bit louder. That sounded better that time around too. I could hear it better. I don't know, honestly. That is tough. So the that one place that I think we do know the the Gretsch mud switch is on is the Tennessean on I'll Follow the Sun. Yeah. That's yeah. like the only place is that the only other place it could possibly be on like is there any other place where the mud switch would be on uh i, I wouldn't have any. even gotten that far yeah and i did a i did a cover of that a while ago and Mr. it sounded moonlight no uh, maybe i don't know i don't know i think it's been a while since i've listened to that one yeah i can't think of any off the top of my head can't think of any others i have no either. idea Sam, I can't tell if your audio is out now. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was just saying, I, I agree. I think I'll follow the sun. It's probably the only yeah. one. Yeah, that's interesting. Any other songs the 345 could have been on? So, Paul had said before that maybe that guitar on I'm Looking Through You, which I had not considered. Because uh, if you think about it, too, it's the right amount of distortion, possibly. Yeah. To kind of be like Day Tripper. Yeah, I should definitely try a recording of that at some point. The contestants for that one, to me, are like, it would either be like the 345 or the Strat. Hmm. I'm not totally sure. Yeah, some people like Michael Sokol uh, played an Epiphone Casino thinking Paul was on lead, right. but it's yeah. very, it's very possible. controversial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to see, did they, oh, this is mixing. I'm trying to figure out what day they actually did that. What, looking through you? Yeah, do you know? Hold on. Uh. It was November 10th and 11th. Okay. Overdubs oh, okay. on the 11th. Over. So it took a, a day, two days to finish it. Oh, okay, right. Because, oh, this is the whole, like, remake, re-remake. That whole thing where they did it several times. Um, so that... Yeah, well, it's interesting because it's not even listed in, um, in Mark Lewison's book. It's not even listed, like, where the overdub would have happened. Because mm. it wasn't... That guitar was not on the basic track, was it? Because it's... What's the basic track? It's Paul on acoustic. Is that right? Or is he I think on... it's John. Is it John on acoustic? John and then on Paul's acoustic. on bass? Yeah. And then... Tam is George on tambourine? I don't know what he's on. Oof, I, I think maybe? Obviously Ringo's on drums. But it says the vocals are the next day. 
And then, uh, and then someone plays a Hammond organ when they do that. Ringo. Right. That was Ringo that did that, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know, I think that's, that's probably all that the 345 could be on, because it definitely disappears after that. I can pull up those as a bit of a transition to, uh, John's Black Strat. I can pull up some other photos we've got, just so you can see them together. Oh, I didn't even, I didn't show this much yet, maybe I should, we should watch this a little bit. Yeah. Um... And am I sharing audio? Yep. So. Uh. All right. All right. So he's done with it there. Did he bring it back out? Yeah, there it is. There he is, yeah. The sound is from the uh, Blackpool night, if you... Oh, is that right? That? that that in Japan, yeah. The, yeah. The mixing them, yeah. There's, yeah, yeah. Is this also just... What song is that that he's doing there? Yesterday. That's Yesterday? I think... On yeah. the piano? Yeah, Yesterday. On uh, uh, Vox Organ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, well, there's a handful of that. good shots of George with the 345, which obviously I can try to link these. It also shows up in the uh, in the day tripper and we can work it out videos. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess there's it. Really... I mean, it could be on we can work it out, right? What there wasn't any electric guitar no, there wasn't on, an that electric on that recording. That, yeah. There's a really great photo of George with it in the Beatles gear book. Ah, uh, this one. Right. Um, yeah, let me pull up those photos. Where where are those? Someone's... That's one of my favorite photos of George, but um, Don Mar Warehouse. That's where it was. Do we know if that's uh, the same photos of John with the black strat or re rehearsing in that warehouse? Uh, yeah. Okay. He's got the oh, yeah, yeah, that's right that there. Right. Yeah. Let's see. This the no, that's the Rick. So was that them rehearsing for this performance right here that we're or the, watching? Or this like tour anyway? I don't know if it's that specific that one. Um. Yeah, there's this is. Can you guys see this? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a pretty interesting photo. So this is uh for the Christmas '65 tour. Is this what they were carrying around with them? Yeah. On mm -hmm. tour. They were bringing the acoustic with them. That's yeah, it's backup. Yeah. Oh right, because they could play it. They could yeah. play it, and and John already has the uh, the pickup switched. To Interesting. The, he has uh, two Hofners there. At the cavern, yeah. yeah. Huh. And uh, he's got three sixty number two there as well. Yeah. So yep. this is the one that was given to him. You know where? Wh what was the people that gave it to him again? The second three sixty. Rickenbacker, wasn't it? They no, gave, yeah, Rickenbacker yeah, gave it, it to him in um, America. Yeah. I think it was America. I, I thought it was like some shop owner or something. No, nah, it was. I don't uh, know why I was thinking that. Maybe I'm, is that the Guild Twelve? Is that what I'm thinking of? I, I don't know. Sure. They they presented the second Rick to him. It was like at one of those press conferences right. in America. They just like carried it up to him on on stage at yeah. the press conference, right? And you you can hear John go like, "Oh, that's that's fab. Where's mine? <laughs> Where's mine at?" Um. But yeah, so besides that, we've got yeah. the 345, which he obviously was playing a bit. Mm -hmm. And then uh, John's Black Strat. So look so, at that case. That that case, I think, is for the Black Strat, uh, the one that's... On top? Yeah. Yeah. Is that not the uh, the 325 case? I don't know. That's no, a Fender case for sure. Oh, is it a Fender yeah. case? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So... Cool. Yeah, you want to give us a little background on that? The what, Black Strat? Yeah, the Black Strat. Well, this is, uh, there is a far, considerably less information about the Black Strat than there is about even the 345. So, a simple Google search will only give you so much, right? Mm -hmm. So, so 
I was able, well, if you, whatever you have, Dom, the only thing I have on it is the fact that most likely that guitar, the painted headstock was never a thing. 64 and 65, no strats came through with painted headstocks. Yeah. So what it was was the guitar was imported over, and there was a shop that would redo them, and it was, um, um, where is it? I'm going to get the guy's name exactly. Oh, well, basically it was an importer, and he was the one that was in control of, oh, Ivor Arbiter. He was the owner of the Fender franchise in the UK. What they would do is they would paint the guitars shell pink and fiesta red, all the cool different American colors, because they weren't able to get such cool colors over to the UK. Knowing that John Lennon loved black guitars, his goal was was to paint this thing all black and at least paint the headstock to match it all black. And that's the theory. And then it was given to John, and then John just one of those things that he used. Now going forward though, of course, Fender about a year after that tried talking to John and a year after that as well uh, and finally in 68 Fender was able to kind of make a deal and gave John a few guitars but I guess he never ended up using them hmm. but that's all that's all literally all we know on that guitar is most likely it was given to him by Ivor Arbiter which was the owner of the Fender franchise Arbiter the yeah that was Arbiter. like Dallas Arbiter the, the fuzzface maker yeah. the only thing that hmm. I know about the black strat I don't even know if it's definitive was that it was a 64 it was a 1964 strat huh. well, there's a way to tell can you Ryan can you pull up the picture again yeah because um, post 63 strats have different like um, 12th fret inlay Let me see. I guess there, it's hard to see there, there another one here there you go well is that is that oh, the actual the one he used thing. or a no? Reissue? Oh, it's not. This reissue. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, uh, yeah, of course, it's hiding the 12th fret, but if yeah, there would be a way to tell. It looks. I think Dom's right. It's more of a mid 60s. He, he's using fender. it here. Can you tell from any of these? Oh, there you go. Yeah, that would be a good one. Uh, you can zoom in. So 64s. Oh, um, they had perloid. Uh, inlays and I think the 61s had clay, but <laughs> not, like you can, not like you can not like you can tell. You know? It's hard to tell. Hmm. Right, exactly. Yeah, the post 62 strats have um, the 12th fret two dots are closer together. So if it's, uh, they're kind of far apart actually, the 12th fret. So it could have been a uh, 61, but the uh, pick guard is bright white, and it would have had a mink mink green guard. Unless it was a post sixty four. So, do we have? Why did he have this again? Like, since uh, he already has the Sonic Blue Strat. Well, that's I, another theory entirely. That, that's that this is just the Sonic Blue. It was just given to him as a gift. That was yeah. it. Is is there a you theory know, that this is just the Sonic Blue painted? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. But well, that can't be. Because that that he, doesn't work because he shows. He has you pictures can see the after. Sonic Blue in Pepper Sessions. Yeah, exactly. That's George's. Look at flying. the strap. No, but it would have been rocking now. already, right? No. Let me, let me go find What about pictures. the Imagine, though, Dom? <laughs> that's that's another thing, too. No, <laughs> Ryan, it? Rocky Rocky wasn't painted until, like, May or June of 67. Oh, okay. I don't know so it was, about that, it was, I guess. Yeah, it was Sonic Blue during the Pepper what Sessions. What is that? Is that March? I think he's got that out. I think yeah. it's so, this. Dom, you think that the pictures of Pepper are ro Rocky, not John's? Yeah, because, oh, look at the strap. The guitar strap. They didn't change guitar straps that much. It's George's strap? Yeah. Huh. I'm trying to find so, it. Yeah, Sam, that's a totally different theory, too. <laughs> the, uh, the imagine yeah, sessions. I have theories There's about that imagine. There's a color one. photo of it, right? Oh. A... Do, you, do you know what, what month that is? Which one? The it's... where the picture of John with the strap at the, at the oh, Pepper geez, Sessions. Oh, Pepper. Uh... I could find it, maybe. Hmm. There it is. I think this is the day. Is this it? Uh, maybe not. No. February twenty eighth, nineteen sixty seven. Oh, okay. Didn't I just during have the Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds rehearsals? February twenty eighth. 
There she is. Okay. There it is. So I don't. And then besides that, the two guitars look like identical, right? So you're saying this is George's strap? Let me hold on. Let me pull that back up here. Yeah. Okay. I. What what guitar was this strap usually on? Because this isn't the normal strap. At least the one that George has for like the country gent and like what he's using for the three forty five. So, this strap shows up numerous times. Um, hmm. So we see it first on George's casino, I believe. I could be wrong on that. Way in the in the sixty six tours. Okay. Um, that is interesting. See, there's another photo of it right there. Yeah. Uh, there. Uh, go back. Now that one in the middle, where John's facing away from the camera. This guy. Oh, with the strap. Yep. Same strap. See the uh, wind. Uh, the. Uh, mm -hmm. But what was that logo in the back of the headstock? The. Oh well, that would be the way to tell is if that logo on the back of the headstock. It was only on George's. No, it wasn't. It was on both of them, I think, because they both came from the same place. Huh. huh. So, does that is this the only time that 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 photos of the the Sonic Blue Strats show up after sixty five? Except for the Imagine sessions, but when, that's a controversial oh, thing. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So there's hmm. a there's a good bet that this that this is uh, George's, and then. John's just disappeared or something? No clue. Or he just didn't care about Probably it? He just didn't use it, yeah. <laughs> so it really depends on the Imagine sessions because okay. there was a Sonic Blue strap played by George only during the Imagine se sessions, and it had a maple neck on it. So it's either John's Sonic Blue strap that he converted the neck, or it's just a completely different guitar. Interesting. I think that it's John's strap, but... Supposedly that strat ended up becoming the concert for Bangladesh strat. John really had an affinity for uh, stealing George's guitars. Yeah, he did. <laughs> That's he what had he an did affinity with for stealing guitars in general. Think about the, uh, the Dallas tuxedo from the late fifties. <laughs> now going back to the strat though. Yeah. So let's say if that black strat was the blue one. Let's say if it's not the blue one, whatever it might be. At the end of the day it's safe to say that it would sound the same. Yeah. Whether right. it be a 62, 63, I mean, at the, a 61 possibility, but I don't, I would kind of lean towards it being 64, 65, or maybe a little early 64, or maybe there was something with the, you know, and if that's the case, it would have been basically the same guitar as the Sonic Blues and everything else. And then even that East Squire thing that you see Paul playing, that Telecaster looking thing or whatever it was, at the end of the day, that even virtually could have sounded just like one of these strats. You know, yeah. it's tough to... I can't tell the difference between a Telecast and a strat. Yeah. Well, the, I mean, the the thing with the Esquire is that that's on the song Sgt. Pepper. Not the reprise, but just the regular one. And that he's using it the, Sel the Esquire through the Selmer amp. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Could have been on Benefit of Mr. Kite or um, oh, Good Morning, Good Morning probably as well. the solo on Good Morning, Good Morning. What would it be mm -hmm. on Benefit of Mr. Kite? That little, uh, that oh, whole yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been Casino, but I'm trying to find pictures of the Black Strat with more detail because there are ways to tell. There were so many changes in Fender during the 60s that uh -huh. you could tell with the logo on the headstock or the inlays or the pick guard. There's a lot of ways to tell. There's one picture. Uh... I mean, there's one. I don't have the uh, these session pictures, but they show up in the book. I don't know if you can tell anything from looking at that one. Uh, from the back of the headstock. Yeah. Can you see anything from that? Hold on. That's. I'm looking at it now. It's too dark to. <laughs> it's a very inefficient way to show photos. It actually does look a little bit more like the mid '60s. Um, headstocks that were a little pointier. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm trying to figure this one out. I probably should have researched it more before this. But I mean, in reality, another thing maybe to keep in mind is like, 
Would John have even had time to paint a guitar in 65? Probably not. Someone like, else does it for him. Right. That's Well, that's true. I guess. I don't just... think it's the same. My, my gut feeling is not, it's not the same as the Sonic Blue because yeah. the pick guard is very white on the okay, black strat. Right, right. But I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think it is either. I, this, I just sort of brought it up for fun. They were, I mean, when they got their 61s, they were off-white, the pickguards. They weren't mint green because the mint green was a product of aging because the pickguards were made of, like, uh Yeah, if you celluloid. look at the help uh, pictures of John with the red shirt, it's, like, it's not green, but it's also not really that white either. It's, so, like, white, yeah. Here's a yeah. question I just considered. There's one photo of him from, like, late 65 where you can see the back of George's Strat. Yeah, and that was either, the, like, Revolver. The, like, flame neck. Is that Revolver Sessions? Yeah. Okay. okay yeah, he had a bird's eye maple neck, Well, I'm wondering if you rare. can see that. Would that be the same on the two guitars? Yeah. Oh, it would be? According, according to Grant Gerlach... He said that he says that John's wasn't figured like the way George's was. Ooh, it was well then, very plain. Yeah, actually, I don't think it would have been bird's eye maple on John's because that's pretty rare. Can yeah. you can we see George, that in any of these photos? George had a really nice example of of a neck. Mm -hmm. I wonder. Um, the do you think, the oh wait, here, uh, no, that's a casino. Yeah. Do you see any other Strat pictures in here from the twenty eighth? That one you had before was where John and George were facing each other. You could sort of see the. Yeah, go back know. down. This one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Body's in the way, yeah. <laughs> There's one picture from that day where the strat's lying on the ground, though, or something. Let me just go I through don't know. all these. Well, let's we'll find it if it's there. I'm not going to tell from that. Because that flamed, uh, what, what's the word for it? The Bird's, next bird's eye bird's maple. Eye. Yeah, that's, like, very noticeable. Um, what what are they doing this day anyway? They said Lucy Lucy, Lucy. In the sky with diamonds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Casino. Lucy, casino. Interesting. And this is casino. okay. So maybe they swapped because this is the one that George was holding before. This it had this strap on it. Yeah. Mm. And now George has got his strap again. Is that right? I don't think so. No, it doesn't another look strap wide enough? Oh, yeah. He wants to hide it. Nice. <laughs> Is that that's it? That's they the both exact got same this like one. yeah, yeah. That's the same casino, the right? Buckle one, yeah. All right, where's what happened the two to casinos? the casinos? <laughs> what happened to the uh, the strap? What did he do with it? <laughs> this is also George's uh, short-lived. Strange facial hair. Or yeah, that was that was a very very bad choice. <laughs> Molding <laughs> chops or whatever. <laughs> oh. That shows up in the. Uh... Oh, there it is. There it is. There oh it yeah, is. look at that. Sonic blue though, right? No, yeah. but we already knew that. That's, we were trying to find yeah, the back yeah. of it. Oh yeah yeah yeah. It hadn't yeah, been yeah. painted at this point. Yeah. Well, this is this is the same oh, one where yeah we saw it before. I just want to see if there's any pictures with a neck in the background. Oh, there it is. Never seen that one before. See it. Yeah, that's cool. Ah, uh, <laughs> so yeah, close. Yeah, you just can't tell from this. What about the um the rehearsal? There's one picture in '65 where John is rehearsing on stage with the Sonic Blue yeah. and Paul. Okay. I don't remember uh, when that was, but the only time I know, the only photo I know of is the "You're Gonna Lose That Girl" session from February. Or you mm -hmm. can see John's. I guess we could just go look and see it, what John's looks like from that. Uh, let's see. It's like February. That's the 19th. Yeah. Yeah, so, but I don't All know I know if... about the neck on John's was that it was a quarter sawn maple neck. That's it. I don't know if it had bird's eye or not, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I can't even tell. Let's see, there's a handful of 
pictures with it, but... Hmm. Does this... What was, does this uh, support the thing you were saying about the other one having a pointier headstock? Like, this one doesn't. But we were just talking about it not being... Yeah, so that's strat. a 61 strat, and by 65 they moved to a different logo, and the okay. it got pointier and bigger. Um, it's so hard to say, though. Why can't he just turn around for one picture? <laughs> <laughs> oh! Uh, he's just sitting. It's That's too not... blurry. <laughs> you can see anything. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get any. But regardless... I mean, I, oh. I don't see any figuring on the black strat. The right. way that, you know... Hmm. Oh, is there a... So I guess you could look at the whatever imagine session thing you're talking about, but uh, let's see if you can see the back of it in that. But um, yeah. Anyways. Well, it's safe to say that I doubt he used that black strat on any songs, and even if he right. did, it'd be just like using the well, black strat anyway. Except Dom said something earlier that was a quote from Klaus Vorman. What was that? Oh yeah. So that? again. Another thing Grant had said, he goes, Klaus was there for a few of the sessions, and supposedly he was there for the She Said, She Said sessions. And uh, the sketches that he made showed John playing the Black Strat. Now, I mean, Klaus's depictions of what guitars were used for some things are ridiculously accurate, for the most part. Hmm. You know, he has uh, John playing that, uh, that Dobro. You know, in a oh, few okay. of his sketches, and it's, again, dead on. It's totally accurate. That'd be a different topic entirely, but, uh, you know. Yeah, I don't to know To me, that sounds that. like a strat. Hmm. I've always thought it was the casino, but, uh. It's a, it's a neck pickup. Listen. It's a neck pickup on something. Hmm. I don't know. I'm trying to see what day that was. What, uh, know. she said, she said. Yeah, it's like one of the last ones, right? That would have been uh, June 21st, 1966. Okay. That's why I haven't seen it, because there's too much stuff going on on June 21st. <laughs> you can see from that. Uh, a lot of mixing. Where's the recording? Here we go. Recording untitled. Working title of She Said, She Said. Takes one through three. Tape production. Take three to take four. SI on to take four. And they mixed it the same day. Uh, it says it took just shy of nine hours to record. She said, she said, the group's spending most of the time rehearsing through the least, at least 25 takes. Uh, then the pro recording proper began with three takes on a rhythm track, drums, bass, and two guitars. That's another thing maybe we, since we're talking about she said, she said, we can talk about this some other time I found well. the sketch that Dom is talking oh, about. If you Did you? See, though. Yeah, yeah, send it. Can you guys see... Yeah. You see this? Oh yeah, you can see the. Do you see the? They're talking about tomorrow never knows. I've never and there seen this before. looks like is that John or George? That's got to be John. That's John. And it's it looks like a black. black well, the strat. back of it's black, but yeah. 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 Huh. That's cool. Yeah, I've never seen that before. That's pretty. Me neither. Huh. Yeah, that could have been him just you know filling it in too though with his black and white drawing and mm -hmm. but i mean at the same time why wouldn't it have been a lighter color well, unless he wanted it to stick out more but i don't think we had any evidence that john's uh sonic blue was on that either yeah right like sonic blue is mostly abandoned for revolver for john right mm -hmm. well it's hard to say uh he could it... have used it on um um Got to get you into my life, maybe. I don't know. Yes, sir. There's a. This is the photo. Yeah, there it is. That's right. I was remembering it. Yeah, it see is it? here. There it is. Yeah. This is this is uh, got to get you into my life, right? April fourteenth. Oh, I Not thought that sure. was for the tour, but no, they hadn't gone on tour yet, had that they? Was a storage closet. Yeah. Storage yeah. This is just that, that day. Oh, that's check. cool. I forgot. I completely forgot about this. I'm glad I remembered. Um, April fourteenth. What is that day? That's right. Recording paperback writer and no wait. This is oh, this is April fourteenth. I was thinking this was a week earlier. 
Wait, so this is just paperback writer then. Hmm. Um. But I think does it show up in another? Yeah, that's the only picture you're gonna see of it here. I think is just that uh closet or whatever that is. But hmm. that is interesting that it shows up there because they're yeah. Mm -hmm. When's the next tour dates after after this? June. Okay. I think this is uh, Japan, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Like Germany too. Um. Yeah, it says uh, July. Oh uh, no, June twenty fourth was the first tour of sixty six. Okay. I hmm. could have sworn it was also in uh let me see there's a session from like a week before that this one i was thinking that that closet photo was from this day but i'm wondering if it shows up here at all either no it doesn't look like it because this is this has got to get you into my life hmm. that is really interesting though because like you don't see John's sonic blue in these sessions, but right. you see the black. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. And do you do you think George played his strat on much of Revolver? I want to tell you definitely yeah, his strat for sure. That's uh, okay. Interesting. Middle and neck, I think. <laughs> Another thing, since we're here, that I might bring up, because I've looked at this photo many times, and it fascinates me. How the heck is he playing close that close to that amp with a casino? <laughs> like that's got to be that whole variac thing that uh, Paul was talking about. Like, there's it's no magic. way that casino is as loud as as you would think it would be for the distortion it gets. Well, that um, that's a seventy one twenty, and the seventy one twenty was the first amplifier in the world produced with distortion. Mm. So you just had to click that little foot switch and yeah. you just get distortion. Really. Yeah, first wow. you, in the whole world. That, but that's different wow. from just like that fuzz distortion that it would ha that like some of the boxes would have, right? It, yeah, it's the same. It's the, then the second amp ever produced with distortion was the Conqueror. Mm -hmm. So it's the same distortion modeling. It's the same everything. Interesting. It sounds just like distortion. It sounds just like regular. It doesn't sound like that fuzz pedal that yeah. much. Because mm. uh, the one I know of that has that that weird fuzz sound is. Uh, what is it? Um, the Vox Buckingham. It's also called the Vox Super Reverb. It has like the foot four button foot switch or whatever. That has uh, one of the buttons is just like it was like a fuzz like distortion, but you couldn't. That was the only way to turn it on was through the foot switch. So if you don't yeah, have the foot switch, switch yeah, that's how you the can't do it. that's yeah. how the Super Beatles are. Yeah, you hit the little thing and then yeah, uh -huh. the distortion. That's what it is. It's a fuzz. Okay. But, I mean, it sounds like distortion when you play it. It sounds just like a oh, distortion pedal in my eyes. Hmm. So, hmm. That is interesting. So, it's entirely possible that if, uh, considering the... There's that there's... flame maple neck thing you were talking about if you mm -hmm. go down a little bit more. Mm. Oh, where? I just saw it in one of the pictures. Keep going down right there. To your left oh, this, yeah, this section. is what I was looking for. Yeah. Good, good call. This is what I was trying to find. Before. I mean, it's it's a great example. Probably the best example we're going to get of uh, the figuring on George's Yeah, it's Stratton very... Neck. You can see he tried to pull that sticker off. You know, uh, one way... Oh, and there's the strap you're talking about. That's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. So, you can also see the, the sticker pattern on the back where it was starting to wear uh -huh. out. You yeah. can compare that with Pepper, with the Pepper Sessions. Well, I don't think we got to see the back of it ever. No, you no the one photo of John facing away, <laughs> the, the one from the, where it's like yeah. six six pixels on the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got, I'll put up. Uh, uh, I lost it. Is it? Am I on the right day? Oh, I'm in March. Hang on. Uh, this is the right day. There's no way you're going to be able to see that. <laughs> I mean, you can it's see a sticker, I guess. Zoom in. Zoom in. Uh, yeah, you really can. You really can't see a sticker. <laughs> All right. I mean, no, I think you can see the sticker. Though. Yeah, that, that's, yeah it. That's, that's it right, right there. there. Yeah. But so that's... you see those two, little, those two little spots that are worn out there go back to the 
the revolver session. Mm. So there, they are. there they are, right there. Wow. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. That's awesome work that... done. <laughs> oh, is that just not... I, I was thinking that's just what the sticker looks like. That's No, that's I think those out. stickers are peeled off. Worn off yeah. or peeled, and yeah. you know, mm-hmm. use that dark glue, and they oh. try to rub something on what it. it. Can, you, can someone pull a picture of what the sticker's supposed to look like? Because mm-hmm. yeah. I don't actually well, know. Well, I, I have one on my blue strat. That is very interesting. So you're saying that oh, these little, these are just little divots. Yeah, it's just, you know, worn out, yeah. I see. And that Actually, definitely matches on. that one. I That's really interesting. Here, if you, do you mind if I share screen? Yeah, go for it. This is an actual picture of Rocky. Yeah. It's a custom shop, but okay, it's, Okay, so know, we're seeing, I see, we're seeing those. Oh, interesting. Wow, so that was definitely Rocky then. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. We, so. we discovered something interesting. <laughs> Does that make it more likely then that he could have painted the Sonic Blue black, or is it not very plausible? Well, I mean, it depends on your imagined stuff, I guess. Yeah. I, you know, I would say it's a possibility, but at the same time, he wouldn't have done it. He would have gave it to somebody, right. I would think. He would have been too busy. Plus, if you look at the picture, all it is is professionally painted the head stop. You mm-hmm. know, like. It it's doesn't clean. seep over. It's, it's clean, yeah. 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 So, I mean, it wasn't a quick job. wasn't the, the first other thing, time, too, uh, is... He got something painted black. Yeah, that. Yeah. But at the same time, <clears throat> Fender was all over him. And Fender really... Fender was supposedly, in that little article I was reading, was one of the first companies to say, hey, guys, play our equipment and we'll pay you to play it. So, I mean, this could have been something that he just, again, got but from that. How many people... If John, any one of the Beatles back in the day came to my house, I would have gave him something for free. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, hey, you want my guitar? Take Hell it. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm sure one of these guys, especially that guy in the UK, maybe could have just gave it to him. Hmm. I don't know. But again, it had to have been painted. Because back then, like I said, 64, 65... Those guitars did not come through yeah. a painted headstock. Right, so that mm-hmm. definitely wasn't direct from Fender. I think it could have been though, because there are. Do you mind if I'm sorry? I'm being obnoxious here. I, I know I've seen those like reissue I've... ones like that. Yeah. Oh no, this is a real one. This is a real. But I've seen like CBS. they they make yeah. Squire ones like that, right? Yeah, but they there were certain. I don't know what um, years those custom were shop um, yeah, strats. Those I know Andy uh, Andy. Babiak. Here's Andy Babiak's, yeah. Yeah. So you see but, the look at the logo on that. It's it's more in line with a sixty four, sixty five logo. Mm-hmm. Mid sixties. This would be pre CBS, so this is what it would have looked like if yeah. John's was like a sixty one or yeah. whatever. I see. I, I think that Fender did, I mean if you see a lot of Jaguars or Jazz Masters, there were a lot of matching headstocks okay. uh back then. So what was the thing, that Paul, you were talking about, about them starting to do that in 67 or whatever? Oh, no, they just said 64, 65. They, did, they didn't have painted headstocks. But like uh, Sam was saying, there's a possibility that it did have painted headstocks back then, maybe even 65. But for them to be in England with it, ship it, it, it probably, I don't know, it's be a possibility. a very rare fender. It would be a very <laughs> expensive one yeah. today if that's true. Hmm. Interesting. I like this story, what he was saying on this article, the fact that this guy would bring fenders over and just paint them and then give them, you know, sell them in a in UK and distribute them out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I would think that, again, possibility he just gave John one because John really liked black, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. But, you know, anything's possible. What happened to his Sonic guitar? Yeah, you know? what, what happened to his Sonic Blue? I wonder. We'll I mean, it, I guess that there's a very possible... That as soon as he got the casino, he's like, ah, this is all I need. I don't need another well, one. Well, again... Because, like, yeah, that's yeah. the same time that he retires the, the 325, yeah. right? Well, if the theory is correct... Is there yeah. any overlap yeah, sure. on those two? Yeah. You never see that 325 again? Yeah. Hmm. The th- well, the theory really goes, you know, know if, it, if, that, if it's that, correct... That's definitely Rocky that he's playing. You know, that... Well, I guess yeah. it's 935. We can start wrapping it up if you guys want been going at it for about an hour and what 15 hour hour 20 with i'd say that was a a, a healthy dose of uh getting sidetracked no i think we stayed on topic pretty well for the most part no it's true we did discovered something pretty interesting Hmm. 
Do you want me so, to stop recording? I guess people can let us know if you think uh, if you think John just painted his strat or that one he got given, or if uh, I don't know. What do you think about the black strat? And, I'll put uh, it up yeah. as a poll. Yeah, what songs do you think the 345 is on? Yeah. Uh, it's it's definitely a lot of stuff up in there. It's a very yeah. <laughs> gear uh, turbulent period. <laughs> Yeah. What songs 345 is on? We'll make that a poll on Instagram and also um, John's Black Strat. Yeah, I don't know. Some one of you guys should do a test recording of. uh, Well, I guess based on Klaus Vormann's thing, that would have been probably through like an AC1 or a 7120, right? 7120, yeah. Yeah. So we don't really have a good way of testing that. Wait, with with, uh, with what song? She said, she said. It's, yeah, well, Grant, Grant did a recording of it. I could send with his strat. Well, not with the seventy one twenty though. But yeah, I mean, could have been the um, Black Showman too. I did yeah. mine through the Black Basement with the Casino, and I thought it got pretty close, but hmm. could have been strat. What did you say about the Showman? Did they have a Fender? Showman? They had a Black Showman uh, for oh. Revolver, and my mine's a Black Basement from the same year, so oh, I it's pretty close. Let me let me stream again real quick, just. I want to just find see if I can find a picture of the showman you're talking about. Is that I assume that shows up in one of these session photos? Yeah, right? in one of the revolver pictures, um, the early ones, like the paperback rate of rehearsals. Um, there it is, right there. Go down. Go down. Oh, there it is, right there. there. Well, that's a yeah, basement. That's, that's the blonde basement. basement. Oh, basement. There, if you look at the ones of, I'd have to find it. I know it's out there somewhere. Uh, it's like um, the ones where like George has the the Burns bass. Oh, yeah, that's that's fourteen. Yeah. Was that uh, this day? I think. Yeah. Oh wait, no, maybe this is. is they did a day? bunch of recordings, didn't they? This is the that? yeah. This is. This is this the rain it. basic track. Hmm. I know there's a picture somewhere. I just have to find it. Cause I, I Maybe know from we, this day, though. These pictures are pretty I, heavy on the uh, 7120s. I get confused between the showman and the basement. It's like the same looking. Is it also blonde? No, it's a black face. Okay. Mm. Huh. I, I can look for it. It's a nice little scavenger hunt we got going on. There's, maybe it's on this day. Is this? This is I'm only sleeping. Oh, there it is. That it right there. There oh, it is. Oh yeah, look at that. It's a one by fifteen, so it's a fifteen inch speaker. And That's a one fifty. I thought I thought those were one eighteens. No. I can see the cone in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, probably one fifteen. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, that's the Keith Richards amp that they used a lot. Okay, is this his uh, J one sixty? is plugged this into is that. Sixty four. I think that might be the Gretsch. Uh, no, I don't that's, know. That's the J160. J160, yeah. yeah. The Clusen's on it. He's got that plugged in. That's weird. Oh. I guess just to practice. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a weird combo. <laughs> huh. Yeah, you see that amp in White Album as well. They kept it for quite a while. Interesting. Um, I think it could have been on um, Whoa, Here, There, and Everywhere. I don't know. There's two of them. Where's the second one? Oh, this thing over here. Yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah. yeah two of them. Hmm. Oh, gosh. All we're doing is causing more trouble for ourselves. <laughs> Creating more controversy within the community. Yeah, it doesn't look like he has that plugged in. Yeah. I think that, that, that cord was going to the mic or something. Huh. Weird. Interesting. All right, well, it sounds like we got a lot of the audio tests to do. I gotta, I gotta go take my uh, 345 up. Oh, this picture is actually really interesting. If you zoom in to the basement on the right, there's oh, the yeah. Vox uh, tone bender that Paul was using on um, "Think for Yourself" and all that That's stuff. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I have yet to find a plugin that emulates it that good as as a real one. It's got to be a real. It can't, yeah, it can't be. Yeah. Done. So, Sam, do you do you have one of those? I have a clone of one. Yeah, okay. Analog Man. Hmm. Interesting. It's always interesting looking at these photos and seeing how many baffles they've got up. Um. Yeah. What was that? There was some song I remember. I mean, well, 
the f- fun baffle picture. I'm going a little off topic, but the uh, <laughs> seeing the base for Maxwell's silver hammer. You know that photo with all those baffles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's just crazy. Like, is that a normal thing to do? <laughs> Yeah, because you isolate from each other, and you can turn it up really loud, yeah. and it's not as painful. It's so yeah. funny, because it's like, hmm, I should try that one of these days. <laughs> All right, well, we've we've ended and, and then some, so uh, yeah. well, we'll we'll set out some polls, check out some things. Uh, yeah, uh, nice, yeah. nice seeing you guys all again. Well, uh, oh we'll yeah. yeah. We'll do some more polls. We, I know someone had asked specifically for the black strat to be discussed, so I'm glad uh, someone got their wish. But we'll uh, we'll ask more. People can tell us more ideas about what they want to see. Yeah, we have a um, whole list, I think. Yeah, we've got we got a lot of, a lot of ground um, to cover. Like each things. episode, we unlock like six more things to talk about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never but, ends. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, yeah, I think I think we're good there. So uh, well, we'll be signing off for now, and see you guys next time. Later guys, have a great night. See you lads.